Good evening, everyone. How are you? I see we have four people connected. So, hi, Carlos, Jorge, Juan Carlos, how are you? How is Tuesday treating you? <laughs> hi, teacher. It's very tired. <laughs> yeah, Tuesdays are like, it's not Monday, so we're relieved. We feel happy that it's not Monday, but it's not Friday yet, so it's kind of tough. <laughs> Very Tuesday. sad. Mm -hmm. Tuesdays are like the reality. Hey. On Monday, good evening, Mario. On Mondays, you're still wishing it's Sunday, but then on Tuesday, the reality hits. You have to work. <laughs> All right. So we're going to give a few minutes for your classmates to incorporate and to connect here. In the meantime, we're going to start with a random question, okay? Remember, I will try to start every class making conversation in ran using random questions, the type of questions that they might ask you in a job interview, right? Or in a status interview, depending. So this one is going to be about improvement. I want you guys to think about one thing that you are doing right now to improve your life besides learning English, right? Obviously learning English is gonna improve your life, but I want you to think and mention one thing that you're doing right now that you're currently doing, right? To improve your life, okay? It can be anything from sleeping eight hours or drinking more water, I'm on a diet, anything that you wanna mention that you feel that personally you are doing that is helping you to improve your life or the quality of life, okay? And I'm gonna start telling you mine, right? One thing that I'm doing right now to start improving my life, it's that I'm taking daily walks, okay? I am taking one hour or an hour and a half walks every day because I was like working like 10 hours a day in the office. And then I came to the house, did nothing and then started working and, and, and teaching, right? So that was not healthy, working and working, not the best idea. <laughs> so right now I'm, talking, I'm taking this step to go, and, to go out and walk one hour every day to improve my life. I personally feel it has helped me to be more relaxed before I start teaching the classes. What about you guys? I want to hear you. What are you doing? What is one thing that you're doing to improve your life besides the English class? In my case, teacher, I have to take off, take date off uh, for relax. Okay. And try to, to, to be myself. Mm -hmm. Read it more. Okay. And write more too. <laughs> All right. How long have you been doing that? I don't hear you. How long have you been doing that? Those little changes, how long do you have doing uh, that? Right now, teacher. Okay, and do you feel a difference? Yes. Right? <laughs> I feel good. Perfect. Sometimes sometimes we, when you make a small stop in your life and realize what can you change to be better, and maybe you weren't sleeping properly, maybe you weren't sleeping correctly, <laughs> right? It can be anything. Yeah, eight hours. Mm -hmm, exactly. Mm -hmm. Listen, it looks like a joke, but when you are an adult, <laughs> you don't have to wait hours. A glass water of the water. Exactly. Okay, who else? I want to hear the others. Thank you for participating, Juan Carlos. I want to hear everybody else. What is one thing that you are currently doing to improve your life or the quality of your life besides learning English, of course? Let's see. I want to hear everybody. What is one thing that you're doing? It can be even the listen to what I said, right? Just I just go to walk for one hour every day. It's nothing scientific or nothing crazy, right? What is one thing that you guys think you're doing different that has helped you? Let me ask um, Sylvia. 
Silvia Suleim, are you there? Yes, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Silvia, we're asking everyone right now, what is one thing that you personally <laughs> are doing to improve your life besides learning English, right? It can be anything from drinking more water, anything that you want to mention that you think, what is one thing that you are doing different, Silvia, that is helping you improve your life? Um, casi no le puse atención, teacher. <laughs> improve, okay. mejorar. Improve, mejorar. Uh -huh. What is one thing that you're doing to improve your life besides learning English? Aparte de aprender inglés, right? It can be anything that you think you're doing. Um, Juan Carlos, for example, mentioned Juan Carlos decía, Juan Carlos mentioned he is trying to take days off, tomarse días libres, and to relax and read books, right? What about you, Cynthia? What are you doing to improve your life besides learning English? Mm. Uh, read, read a book, a new book. Okay, you're trying to read books. How long have you been doing that, Cynthia? ¿Cuánto tiempo lleva haciéndolo, Silvia? How long have you been doing that? Um, 15 years. All right. Yes. That, that's a lot of time, Silvia. So that's good. That's an established habit. Nice. Yes. Perfect. I read, uh, I read uh, obras uh -huh. de la escuela. Y Literature. En, <laughs> Uh -huh. And I like, I like it. And uh, before, sorry, oh, uh -huh. the, después, este, after, uh, uh -huh. after uh -huh, book of Paulo Coelho. All right. Of superation. Ah, that's self improvement. Yes. Uh -huh. Very good, uh -huh. Silvia. That's a great habit. Thank you for sharing. Now we want to hear. Um, María Concepción. María Concepción está por ahí. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, María. Did you hear the question I was asking? We were talking about one thing that we're doing to improve our lives. Algo que estamos haciendo para mejorar nuestra vida. Apart from learning English, right? It's not, not we're not going to talk about learning English right now. This is an open topic. Ahorita no les estoy pidiendo recorded speech, no les estoy pidiendo nada. Es un tema abierto. ¿Qué es lo que les decía? Que vamos a empezar a hacer esa práctica para prepararlas a ustedes para entrevistas. Where you will find questions like this that you are not ready to answer. But if you know English, you can improvise to answer, right? So, Maria, tell us. What is one thing that you're doing to improve your life? Silvia was mentioning that she is reading books. What about you? It's time mute, Maria. Teacher, <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> yes, now I can. It's okay. Um, I am a study in Epsom Saturday, um, 1 p.m. at 6 o'clock. Very good, Maria. You see, guys, if you notice, most likely every one of you is doing something extra to improve your life. Very good, Maria. Thank you for sharing. Okay, let's talk to Diana. Diana Elizabeth, are you there, Diana? Yes, teacher, I'm here. Okay, can you tell us what is one thing that you're doing, that you're currently doing to improve your life or your quality of life besides learning English? <laughs> okay, uh, things I'm doing to improve my life is to do exercise a okay. little bit every day. Um, also, to do meditation. I don't know if okay. that's oh, okay. okay. To do meditations every morning to start my day. Very and good. Practice the the breathing. The, the breathing. Yes. Breathing. Uh -huh. Breathing. Yes. yes. Do you feel uh, it has helped you, Diana? Yes, a lot. 
cool. I used to try meditation years ago, but I was too impatient. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that happened to me too, but I found <laughs> podcasts in uh -huh. Spotify that helps you a lot to do it. Oh, all right. I remember it was like, you have to breathe, inhale, exhale. And I was like, I oh, know I did it twice. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> they lose me <laughs> nice congratulations Diana. that's a good step thank Thanks. you for sharing we want to hear mario villeda mario are you there are you there mr mario villeda yes teacher okay okay mario what about you what is one thing that you're doing to improve your life Besides, uh, in my case, in my case, it's very simple. Okay. I try to not drink a lot of salt every day. You try to what? To I didn't not hear drink. You. Oh. Drink salt, salt every day. It sounds very simple, but it is not very simple. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It takes a, a, a lot of willpower fuerza de voluntad willpower willpower yeah mm -hmm. willpower just for you to have it there in the chat okay very good that's a good that's actually very good <laughs> resolution Mario. congratulations nice thanks let's thanks. see what about you wendy wendy manivel what are you doing what is one thing you're doing to improve your life wendy Okay, I try. Uh -huh. I try read. I try pray more. Pray uh -huh. God more. Read the Bible more. I try. Uh -huh. um, eat more helpful. Drink more water and drink vitamins. Yes. All right, that's a good one. Thank you, Wendy. What about? Nelson Gavarrete. Nelson, what is one thing that you are doing to improve your life besides Hello. learning English? Hello. Good evening. Hi, Nelson. I am learning a, a new language forever okay. for the opportunities uh -huh. in my life. Perfect. That's a good one. That's nice. Thank you, Nelson. Um, let's see. Jose Jonathan, have you participated already, Jose? Yes, um, I some sometimes I take uh, some course okay. uh, for technologies um, for uh, improve my English. Uh, sometimes <laughs> um, uh, listen music uh, or sometimes listen uh, some podcasts on um, um, Spotify. All right, that's good. Thank you for sharing with us, Jose. Nice. Let's yeah. ask Tatiana Michel. Tatiana, are you there? Yes, teacher, I'm here. Okay, did you hear the question? Or did you just connect? <laughs> we're talking, Tatiana, about one thing. We're mentioning one thing that you're doing to improve your life besides learning English, right? Besides what? Besides <laughs> learning English, aparte de aprender inglés, one thing ah. that you're doing to improve your life. Or uh, your health or anything. <laughs> yes, actually, I doing exercise every afternoon. Okay. Yes. Do you like it? Yes, I like it. Nice. <laughs> so you see, if you think about it, if you stop and think about it for a moment. We are all probably doing something extra, right? Besides learning a new language, trying to do something extra to improve our life. So very good job, very good. I don't know why I keep putting myself on mute, <laughs> but nice. So now that we have practiced random topic, and again, we're gonna be trying to do this um, every class at the beginning of the class. We're gonna try to do a random topic conversation so you can practice free free speaking, right? Free conversation. And you can also learn how to improvise when you're learning English, when you're speaking, okay? So now we're gonna review what we were seeing yesterday. Um, question, has everybody finished or completed the, the midterm exam? Have you guys all completed the midterm exam? 
Not yet, teacher. All right. No, teacher. I thought so. So don't worry. We're going to finish some topics tonight. We're going to review basically the topics and then we can check it at the end. So that you can do it. Great. So last night we were talking about reported questions, WH questions, or yes, um, information questions, right? We call them WH or we call them information. Okay. Remember the first rule. When you're going to report a WH question, usually the subject will come before the verb, right? There are some exceptions, but in general, subject will come before the verb and you will use the past of the sentence, right? If the first one is in present, you change it to past. If the first one is in present progressive, you change it to past progressive you will change it to its counterpart. Lo van a cambiar siempre a un tiempo gramatical atrás en el cual está la oración original, right? And then the auxiliary do. Look at this one. What do you want? When I change it to reported speech, I omit the auxiliary do. She asked me what I wanted. No, yes, so she asked me what did I want. Mm -mm. She asked me what I wanted. The only a scenario where I can use the auxiliary did in past is if the sentence is in negative, because in negative, it's mandatory to use an auxiliary, right? For example, in present, who doesn't like cheese? When I report it, I change it to past. She asked me who didn't like cheese. That's the only scenario where I will keep and I will use the auxiliary if it's negative, right? Negative sentence or negative questions, obviously. Now, remember, acá les decía, the first one. Ideally, you change it to the past of the sentence and the subject goes before the verb, usually. Except if you have this combination. Who, what, or which, plus the verb to be in an object. Specifically, those three elements have to be there. And then it will give you an extra option to answer, right? You can use the subject before or after the verb. Example, who is the champion? Let's look at the combination. Who, verb to be, object. Who is the champion? So I have two options to answer. I can say, she asked me who the champion was, or she asked me who was the champion. I can leave the subject before the verb or after the verb. Okay, if I see that combination. The next example, what is your favorite color? And then when I report it, again, two options. Look at this, what, right? Verb to be plus object, verb to be plus object. Again, it gives me two options to answer. I can say, she asked me what my favorite color was, or she asked me what was my favorite color. Okay. Teacher. Yes. Is necessary uh, ask me. Oh, yeah. This one, if you're reporting a question, yes. But remember, you can also use um, she wondered, right? She was wondering. You can use that also. The ask is because you're going to report that sentence that is here, right? So to start reporting, I can use ask for questions, all right? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and now, do we have questions with that part? Yes, no. If there are no questions, we will do an exercise. Well, no, we're not going to do an exercise. We're going to play a game. <laughs> we're going to play a game that's going to be for reported speech, right? So I think this one is 10, um, what is it? 10 volunteers. So we're gonna, same thing. I'm gonna give you guys the, the control so you can choose the answer, okay? So each of you that raise the hand and if it's your turn, I will give you the remote control so you can answer, okay? You can select the correct answer. So raise your hands. Please raise your hands if you wanna participate in the game. And I will give you the remote when it's your turn, okay? We're gonna start, I think it's gonna be 10. So we're gonna need 10 volunteers. 
So raise your hand so you can answer one question each. Each of you will answer one question. So just raise your hand to have an, an order, all right? So uh, let's see. Tatiana Michelle, you will answer the first one. Wendy, you will be second. Claudia Maria, you will be third. Diana Elizabeth, you will be number four. Okay. okay. Um, Jose Jonathan, you will be number five. And then Juan Carlos, you will be number six, please. And Juan de Dios, you will be number seven. Vamos a quedar hasta seven, a ver cuántas trae el pollito, okay? So we can go there. One minute. Okay, here you have the tutorial, right? You're going to read the question that will show in the screen and you will select the correct answer, right? It's a multiple answer, it's a multiple choice, okay? Once you are sure you select the correct answer, you press submit, okay? You will be given time. Es medido, va con tiempo. So you gotta make sure to select the right answer um, fast, right? Some questions have multiple answers. Make sure all of them are selected. If you think that there are multiple answers, you can select more than one, all right? Not in all the questions, but some of them, they do have more than one option. Okay, so I'm gonna give the control to Tatiana, you have the control. You can click on next and you can start. Choose the correct answer. Read it out loud, Tatiana, please. You're in mute, Tatiana. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Pay attention to the text. <laughs> yes, but I can just select letter A. <laughs> <laughs> we will have another opportunity. <laughs> you will have another opportunity. Don't worry, Diana. Okay, we're gonna give the control to who was number two. Who was number two in this game? Teacher. Wendy. Okay, Wendy, you have the control. Click on next, and you can continue. Oh, my. Uh, tiene que moverlo hasta donde está next. Uh -huh. Ya lo hice, pero no me sale. <ríe> ah, el controlito. Ajá. Uh -huh. uh, y ahí le da clic. Creo que no voy a poder. Vaya. Lea la, la pregunta y de la respuesta. Yo sé la selección. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok. Andy, goodbye to me. En... Um... Left. Ay. Okay. Presta atención que la oración está en pasado, bueno. Oh. Porque dice en left. Okay. Ay. Submit. Ay, Ahí ya, la, ya está seleccionada. Se lo seleccioné. All right. ¿Eh? Very mm -hmm. good. You did it, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, we're gonna go with who's number three? Me, teacher. Okay, Claudia, right? Yes. Claudia Maria, you have the remote. Let's click on next. Choose the correct answer. Read it, please. Mm -hmm. Ask about your holiday. Was it fun? Was it fun? Mm -hmm. Careful, uh huh? Submit. Very good, Claudia. <laughs> you got it, Claudia. Thank you. Okay, who's number four? Me, teacher. Diana, Elizabeth. There you go. You have the control. 
Choose the correct answer. Read it, please. Okay. I wonder where Emma is. She said she will be here before noon. Okay. Correct. Use the correct tense. Nice. All right. Give me one minute. Now we're going to give the control. Who was number five? Oh, one minute. Who was number five? Me teacher, Jonathan, Jose Jonathan. Okay, yeah, thank you, one more. Okay. Mm, let's see. Okay, you have the control, click on next. Choose the correct answer. James, had, he was bored at the school. Um, okay. Say. Mm. Remember, la, acuérdense de la regla. Yes. En, entre yes. say y tell. En este caso sería told, el pasado. Okay. Tell o told es el único que se puede usar que después va un objeto. En este oh. caso el objeto es me. Ok. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Okay. Very good. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Who was number six? Who was number six? Remind me, please. Oh, was it you, Juan Carlos? No, era I, teacher. Ya llegamos al No, right? No, I think your number is uh, Juan de Dios. Is it you, number six? Let's see, Juan de Dios, help me with number six, please. You have the control. Okay. Choose the correct answer. Read, please. The doctor said that I should rest for at least a month. Very good, Yes, thank you. Okay, finally, we have one star, people. <laughs> We're advancing now. All right, let's see. Um, Juan Carlos, help me with number seven. Okay, I'm gonna give you the share, share the game feature. <laughs> <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Juan Carlos, you have the remote control, please. Uh, next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Choose the correct answer. Read, please. Don't tell anybody what I. It's a secret to be with us. Correct. Don't tell anybody what I. Very good. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Tatiana, do you want to do number eight? Do you want to try again, Tatiana? Yes, teacher. Okay, you have the remote control. Now. Thank you, girl. I guess I can't throw All right, here. Uh -huh. Choose the correct answer. Did he? I already have an auxiliary in past. What happens when I have an auxiliary in past? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yay. <laughs> We got Diana. <laughs> All right. 
Um, let's see, we need four more volunteers for this one. Do we have more volunteers here? Me, teacher. Manuel, give me one minute. Le doy el control, Manuel, o usted se le... I can't, teacher. I'm okay. using my cell phone. All right, let's go. Lo lee. Choose the, the correct question. answer. Okay. Jim couldn't help me. He sent me to ask Katrina for help. Mm -hmm. Se puede decir, say me. Told me. Correct, Manuel. Oh. Remember the rule. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Very good. Who wants to go next? We're very close to the end. Who wants to go next? You can repeat. Se pueden repetir. Let's see. Wendy, do you want to try again? Yes. Okay, Wendy, you have the control. Where it says next. Mm -hmm. Choose the correct answer. Read Wendy, please. You're in mute, Wendy. Let's see. Submit. Mm -hmm. Oh, it wasn't selected. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they stole the meat from us, guys. <laughs> All right. Wendy, we can do one more. Um, the way are next. You still make the correct answer. Choose the correct answer. Leana, por favor. Okay. Left, left, remember left, está en pasado, se fue, Tina y se fue, eso ya me está en la pista, Wendy, que lo que tiene que ir aquí tiene que estar en pasado también, ¿verdad? Pasado también, Ajá. ok, vamos a ver. Uh... So goodbye. Okay. Se puede decir told si no hay una persona después. No sé. <laughs> no sé. No entiendo este tema. <laughs> we got eight out of ten, guys. Okay. So we got eight correct ones. Give me one minute. Okay. Um. And we're going to review this. Esto me me da una pauta a mí para repasar una cosilla. Le voy a compartir um, el whiteboard. Ok, la pizarra. Esto es a grosso modo. Ok, eso es como grosso modo para rep rep repasar esta parte. Yo, so, so that you don't forget. Ok. Um, when I use the verb tell, it can be tell in any of its forms. Tell told told remember right it will usually be followed by an object for example i told you okay that's a subject plus the verb tell plus an object usually you will always use it in this way you cannot say i told for example, you can say, I told good morning. Mm -mm. Told or tell can only be used followed by an object. I told you, I told my mother, she told me, she told her friends. Okay? The verb tell will always be followed by an object. An object in la oración, pero en realidad puede ser otra persona, right? I told you. Subject, tell, object. All okay. right, that's the combination. It's wrong. I cannot say, for example, Maria told good morning. 
that is wrong. Mm -mm. We cannot do that, right? That is wrong. We cannot do that. The correct way would be Maria said good morning. Okay. Now, here is the other verb. Ambos verbos quieren, al traducirlo, se, de, se traducen como decir o hablar, right? However, they are not used the same. The verb say and its past tense and participle, say, said, said, that one can change. Listen to this one, right? Subject and verb. Eso sí puede ir así. Subject plus verb. Okay. I said the what is what is it called i said the poem okay yo dije el poem i said the poem okay or i said hello to everyone this morning okay said me da say o said en su, en su forma pas pasada y participio me da un poco más de libertad right it can be used differently but tell specifically cannot be used without yeah, a. Sí se puede decir me, Maria told, porque usted puso told good morning. Pero mire qué puse. Aquí dice Wendy no que está es wrong, que está incorrecta. Esta ah. es la versión incorrecta, Wendy. Uh -huh. We cannot say good. Told, si un sujeto después o un objeto no se puede. Told, y lo voy a decir en español por cualquier cosa. Cuando utilizamos tell o cualquiera de sus tiempos gramaticales, siempre va a ir seguido de un objeto o un sujeto en la oración, ¿ok? No puedo yo decir, fulanito told hello. No se puede. Está incorrecto, ¿ok? El que tendría que usar en ese caso sería say en cualquiera de sus tiempos gramaticales. En este caso, said en pasado. María dijo buenos días. María said good morning. María dijo, yo dije el poema, I said the poem. O yo dije hola a todos esta mañana. To everyone. Ok. Say me da un poquito más de movilidad o flexibilidad. Pero tell, mm -mm. tell siempre va a seguir esta regla. All right. Ok, this was just a reminder, guys, to keep in mind. Right. Now. We're gonna clear. Can I delete this? No, no puedo quitar Sub esto. Subject, subject, and uh, I, I, mm -hmm. many are there. Mm -hmm. So, el object, el object, el object puede ser una persona, animal, cosa, lugar, que va después de un verbo. Wendy. El que recibe la opción del verbo, a eso se le considera un object en la oración. Ok. En este caso, María le dijo, um, bueno, aquí está, yo te dije a ti, yo soy el sujeto, te dije el verbo, a ti se vuelve el objeto. Quien recibe la acción en la oración va a ser el Entonces, objeto. Si solamente dice como en una oración, tiene que ser say. Yes, lo que decíamos. I said the poem, I said good morning, like that, right? If you can take a screenshot, si le pueden tomar captura foto and we can move forward, all right? Let me know. Let me know if I can clear the screen. My hands are still on the Yes, teacher. Okay, we will clear it right now. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to, what is it? Page 21. Okay, I'm going to share with you the book. We're going to go to the student's manual and we're going to do the exercise on page 21. Okay. So, question Have you guys ever returned a product that you order online? Have you ever had to return a product that you bought? Personally, I have. I have never had to return anything. No teacher. Yeah, no, I think... no teacher. Okay. What about we, we some... accept the product even if 
<laughs> oh no, <laughs> we take it as it comes. <laughs> All right, but what about, let's not think only online. Let's think also physically. For example, Siman, Sears, any of the stores that are here in El Salvador. Have you ever bought something from those stores and returned it? Probably not, right? Here in El Salvador, we don't have that policy. Esa política. We don't have that policy. In other countries, they have the policy that if you buy something and it's barely used or you didn't like it, you can return it. So that's cool, right? <laughs> The other day I was in I was in Siman on Sunday, I think, Saturday or Sunday. And I was waiting for the technician. They were checking something on my computer. And when I was there, a woman arrived and she was returning five laptops that she had bought, that her daughter bought. Her daughter bought five laptops and expensive ones. And she was returning them. And when they asked her, why did you allow your daughter to do that? Why did you give her permission to buy five laptops? She said, I didn't give her permission. She has um, schizophrenia. She has schizophrenia. So she, she did it unwillingly, involuntarily, right? So in that case, they accepted the return. And I asked the man, so one can return things here? And he was like, usually no, but this was a special situation, he said. <laughs> So yeah, in our country, we don't have that, that policy or that culture of returning things. As Jorge says, we take it as it comes, right? We accept it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to need one, two, three. I'm going to need four volunteers to read this paragraph that we have in here. Okay. We, one person is going to read as paragraph one, two, and like that. And the last person will read the tips. And then we will answer the questions. Okay. So Jorge, help me with number one, please. Claudia Maria, number two. Tatiana, number three. And Jose Jonathan, number four, please. Which is the tips. Let's start. Okay. I recently purchased an, an expensive electronic item from each bay. They return policy said for. 14, 14 days to return. I wanted to play, to play with the item for a few days to see if I wanted to keep it. Now I'm not getting a refund because the package was not in perfect condition. Very good, thank you. Number two. I ordered some PC speakers, I'm not sure whether they were faulty or just not suited to my sound card, but the e-store took them back without a question. I did claim they were faulty rather than unwanted, but I doubt they actually checked them before refunding. Thank you. Let's go number three. My wife just returned a cam camera case that was too small for her camera. We had a lot of problems when returning the product and we had to pay shipping to send the camera back. We wait for two months before receiving the, the refund, refund. Refund, correct. Refund. Yeah. And number four, please. Tips for shopping online. Number one, item, for, item bought on sale maybe have a shorter return period or may not be returnable. Two, return may not be as simple when items are bought through a third party website. Number three, uh, save all receipt or other paperwork for the item that you purchase. Number four, check the number of day you have to notify the return an item and check if there are conditions like keeping the original package. Check if the online store will cover for return shopping. All right, thank you to the ones that read. So we're gonna answer these questions. So number one, our return policy is, who wants to answer number one? 
according to the reading group. Our return policy is letter, let's say letter A. There are no letters, but let's say letter A. Our return policy is the process a customer follows to ship previously purchased merchandise back to the store or a written guarantee given to the purchase to the purchaser of a new product or service. What do you think? Letter A. Okay, return policy. And that is, that is, I cannot select it, but that is the right one. Yes, that is correct. The second one. <laughs> I was trying to check it. The second picture. A reading. A reading warranty. A reading warranty given. Why? Number two. In... Because teacher. Uh, I want to know why you think it is. Yes, is is I think if is it didn't uh, even uh, uh, some writing in any paper or you know, uh, in this case uh, we don't we don't have. One. Okay, here's the thing. We're gonna analyze this because it's important. Listen, the first one says return policies, right? It says the process a customer follows to ship previously purchased yeah. merchandise back to the store, okay? Return and back to me go hand in hand. And the second one, it says- The first uh, one, because not all, all sellers have the same return policies. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, for example, some the store only 15 days, only mm -hmm. 10 days, only five days. Exactly. That's right. Also, the written run, the written guarantee given to the purchaser, this is the normal guarantee. Not that yes. is not the same as the return policy, right? Okay. So the correct one is the first one. This is a police, a policy. Mm -hmm. Policy. Mm -hmm. Policy. Policy. Right. And then we have number two. How many days does the store in paragraph one provide for returns? 14 days. 14 days. Exactly. 14 days. 14 days. Very good. And now we have number three. What was the reason the consumer returned his purchase in paragraph number two? What was the reason the consumer returned his purchase in paragraph number two? Faulty product. Yes, correct. Faulty product. It says at the beginning, right? They, whether they were faulty or just not suited, right? Do you know what is faulty, guys? Defectuoso. Faulty. Similar to damage. Mm, probably, yes. But damage is when we are sure that it, there is a like a physical damage, right? Faulty, on the other hand, we know something is not working, but we cannot see a, a physical thing, right? So faulty, defectuoso, for you to keep this in mind, right? And, and then, then we... Suited. Where is it? Suited. Hechos para. Mm -hmm. Que no le quedan. Mm -hmm. like not suited. Not suited, que no le quedan. Mm -hmm. Yes, suit. Mm -hmm. um, and then number four. How long did it take for the customer in paragraph three to receive the refund? Two months. Two months. All right, very good. We got that correct. So now, is this part I'm going to share with you guys? Give me a minute. You're gonna do an exercise similar to what we just saw. I lost it, give me a minute. Here it is. Okay, you're gonna do an exercise similar to what we just saw in the student's manual, okay? We're gonna go into the breakout rooms and you're going to write one or two paragraphs telling a story, okay? Like this one, right? Or like this one, okay? You're gonna write one or two paragraphs, writing, telling a story. 
end, after you finish that, you're going to make two questions related to your paragraphs, right? To your stories. So basically you're gonna work in groups in the breakout rooms. You will create one or two paragraphs, a short story, and you're going to ask two questions about it to your classmates, to the other groups, right? So one or two paragraph maximum, it can be the same story, different paragraphs or two different stories as you wish. Just make sure that you include minimum two questions, all right? For the other groups to answer, okay? For this one, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes, but we will come back to the main session after 10 minutes and we will check how we're doing, all right? Um, there will be ideally three people per room. Two to three people. The rooms are open right now and you will have 10 minutes. Remember, you're going to write a story of two paragraphs or two different stories and make two questions about it, okay? You can enter the rooms now. Juan de Dios, can, are you going to join? Claudia Maria lo está esperando. <laughs> Silvia, do you have trouble getting into, your, into the room? And Carlos Antonio Hernández, are you going to join room number three? Carlos Antonio. ¿Cómo? Hello, ladies. Pasan a ver si necesitan ayuda o si tienen dudas. Mm, que eh. si estaba bien así. No sé. I'm sorry. Eh, estábamos armando la. la, la, la uh -huh. el ok. Primer, eh, 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 two paragraph and two question, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Exactly. Yes. Like that. All right, then I'll see you girls in a few minutes. Okay.
Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. Disculpe que no me pueda ya, eh, meter a, a la clase, pero tengo unos inconvenientes en el trabajo y, y estoy tratando de resolverlos. No worries, Carlos. Solo, 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 solo voy a continuar de oyente en lo que pueda. Ok, that's fine. Not a problem, Carlos. Thank you Muchas for letting gracias. me know. Uh -huh. Muchas gracias. Uh -huh. Hi, Sylvia, what happened? Okay, from esta postal, ¿en qué sala estaba, Sylvia? You're in mute. Está en mute, Sylvia. No me fijé, teacher, eh, me sacó antes el internet. Eh, ¿Te acuerdas con quién estaba? No, todavía estábamos en el grupo completo uh -huh. cuando me, sal me salí. Ok. Um, José Rodrigo, usted acaba de ingresar, ¿verdad? ¿O estaba en alguna sala? José Rodrigo. Mm, not there. Ok, Silvia, en su caso vamos a esperar. Ya solo faltan tres minutos para que regresen. Vamos aquí, entonces. All right. Porque si le agrego alguna sala y ellos ya van avanzados, ya no le van a poder incorporar. Ok, so we're just going to wait. Ok, teacher. Teacher, yo no entendí muy bien uh, las W opciones que estaban en las diapositivas. Uh -huh. mm, que, bueno, igual ya lo vamos a ver ahorita, en unos minutitos. Lo voy a volver a mostrar, okay. pero desde el manual del estudiante. Ah, uh -huh. oh, ok. Uh -huh. Thanks.
Okay, now that we're back. Um, let me check. Um, has everybody finished? Or do you need a few more minutes to complete the task? Please, a few minutes, please. All right, everybody else needs more time? Yes, teacher. All right, then I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you five more minutes, right? So I'll open the rooms right now. You can go back. You can go back to the breakout rooms. You have five more minutes. Okay. I'm sorry, I was coughing. <laughs> Hi, Christia. We're just giving a few more minutes for the groups to finish. Good evening, Miss. Okay. So right now, just wait here. <laughs> okay. Thank you.
Okay, we're back now. So we can start. Before we do that, before we start with the presentations, we're going to go with the list. So be ready to say here or present. Ana Raquel Villalta. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar. A Claudia Maria Melendez. Here, teacher. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth. Here, teacher. Thank you. Jorge Humberto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Jonathan. I'm here, Miss. Thank you. Jose Rodrigo. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan de Dios Mejia. Present, teacher. Thank you. Linda Ibet Marquez. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Thank you. Maria Concepcion Cerón. Present. Thank you. Maria Elena Guadalupe. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Present. Thank you. Nelson Gabarrete Merino. I hear Miss. Thank you. Norma Carolina. Norma Carolina Villeda. Olga Marlene Gomez. Present teacher. Thank you. Silvia Suleima Rodriguez. Present. Thank you. Tatiana Michelle Sanchez. Present teacher. Thank you. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta. Present teacher. Thank you. And Christian Natalie Erazo. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay. So. We're gonna start with the presentations. Let me just display the student's manual. Okay, let's start with your presentations. We have room number one. We have Jorge Humberto and Maria Concepcion, please. Uh, I have a couple of paragraphs, teacher. Okay, everybody pay attention to what Jorge and Maria are going to read because they will ask you questions afterwards. They can select room two, room three, four, five, or six. They will choose who they will ask, okay? Uh, okay. I like to buy regularly online in eBay because I have the opportunity to get models or different styles that uh, doesn't exist here in El Salvador. The last month, I bought shoes and poles to practice trail running, and I recommend to use eBay because the platform is safe. Mm -hmm. Now, now my my classmate continue with your paragraph. Okay. I need to buy underwear I have seen on the moms page that there are offers, I think I will order things online because they are much cheaper this way. Uh, the, the question number one is what, what kind of items Jorge likes to buy online? For which group, Jorge? Two, three, four, five, or six? Uh, number two. Okay, room number two, Juan Carlos, Manuel, and Maria. Repeat your question, Rachel, please. What kind of item Jorge likes to buy online? Room number two. Teacher, mm -hmm. uh, I know this part uh, of the about the about the question. Mm -hmm. uh, I I am sorry. I I I didn't I didn't say well. You didn't uh, hear uh, well. Yes, I didn't. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Can you read your paragraph one more time, please? Please. Thank okay. you. I like to buy regularly online in eBay 
because I have the opportunity to get models or different styles that doesn't exist here in El Salvador. The last month, I bought shoes and poles to practice trail running. And I recommend to use eBay because the platform is safe. Now the question is, what kind of items Jorge likes to buy online? I, I, I think I hear shoes, shoes for training. Okay. All right. Did you mention another thing, Jorge? Yes. What was it? Poles. Poles. All right. Very good. Thank you. And the second question, room number one, for which group do you have it? Uh, the second question, my, my classmate. Maria, for which group? Uh, are you sure it's an um, underwear shipper in Simam? Um, is that something you mentioned on, on your paragraph, Maria? Is a uh, under one I have sent on um, Simon's page that there are offer. I think I will order them online because they are much cheaper this way. Okay. Who to which group are you asking your question, Maria? Group two, three, four, five, or six? Uh, number four. Okay, room number four. Diana Elizabeth, Mario Villeda, or Nelson Gabriel. Please answer Maria's question. Maria, read the question, please. Yes. Uh, are you sure it's uh, cheaper? Sorry, I didn't get it. I think Maria is asking, is the underwear cheaper? Is the underwear cheaper online? Is that the question, Maria? Maria? Maria Concepcion? Hello, teacher. Sorry. Is that your question? Is underwear cheaper online? Yes, teacher is okay. underwork. Okay, room number four, that's the question. Is underwear cheaper online according to her paragraph? She mentioned it at the end of the paragraph. <laughs> cheaper or cheaper, teacher? Cheaper. Uh, I don't know, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, she mentioned it at the end of her paragraph. Um, and let me tell you guys, these type of exercises in which you create their own problems and you have the solutions, the questions and answers, it's going to help you practice active English, active listening, okay? Usually humans, by nature, we start listening, but five seconds afterwards, we're not listening, we're only hearing. This exercise is going to help us practice active listening. Maria mentioned at the end of her paragraph, I think this way it's much cheaper. So yes, the answer is yes. It's cheaper buying online, according to Maria's paragraph, okay? Let's go. Thank you, room number one, Jorge and Maria. Good job. We're gonna go with room number two. Room number two, we have Juan Carlos, Manuel, and Maria Elena. Please read your paragraphs. And then you ask the questions. You select the whole. Uh, we create a, a small uh, history right. about the uh, seller and vendor. Okay. Uh -huh. Maria, start. Yes. Uh, um, good afternoon, Mr. Palma. Um, Carlos and me bought a laptop. Uh, okay. What is the problem? Um, the laptop isn't work. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carlos. 
will we have a refund or a change the product? Yes, you will have a new product. Uh, okay, uh, our policy says uh, you need to return the item in less 15, uh, 15 days. And then uh, you will receive your new products in two months. Are you okay? Okay, thanks. It's a pleasure. Thank you, all, teacher. Mr. Palma. Um, the question number one is how long does, um, does the policy say that the process of our reform or exchange must be done? For which group is the question? Thank you. For which group is the question? Um, the, the, the okay. number the number number three okay room number three Ana Raquel, Carlos Antonio, Wendy Maribel uh, can you repeat the paragraph, paragraph the paragraph or the or the, the conversation paragraph the conversation, the conversation. okay, okay. Long. <laughs> good afternoon Mr. Palma uh, JC and me uh, bought a laptop. Okay, what is the problem? Um, and the laptop, it doesn't work. Uh, okay, Mr. Juan Carlos. Will we have a refund or a change of the product? Yes, you will have a new product. Okay, our police, our policy say you need to return the iron in less 15 days and then you will receive your new product in two months. Okay, the, okay. the question. The question number one is, how long does the policy say that the process of the return or exchange must be done? Seven day, fifteen day, one month. Fifteen days. Yes. Fifteen days. Yes. Good. Good That's listening, fun. Anna. Yes. Good listening. All right. And um, the question number two. Uh, For which group? Group number. I don't know. One. For group number one, okay. Jorge and Maria. How long does it take for the company to comply with the policy? Uh, uh, multiple mm -hmm. options, seven day, 15 day, one month. Uh, one month. Yes. Very good. <laughs> I, I Bye, guys. Think. Thank you. Active listening, guys. Nice. Now, remember, and this this active listening is very important, especially if you have plans to take English as a second language exams, ESL exams, or TOEIC or TOEFL. This is the way they are. They will play one recording or a conversation for you. They will play it one time, and then you have to answer the questions. So this is a good exercise we're doing here, okay? So let's continue. Thank you, room number two. You did a great job. We're going with room number three. All of the mass rooms, please pay attention to the conversation or the paragraph from room number three. Ana Raquel, Carlos Antonio, Wendy Maribel, you can start. Okay. Wendy, uh, I say the, the first paragraph and you the second paragraph. And the first, my friend. <laughs> My friend returned a blouse that was large because her mother bought it. She didn't have problems when returning the blouse and she left the store satisfied. The question, yes. the question is, uh, what product did the customer return? For which group, Anna? Um, for? 
Room number four, Diana Mario Nelson. Is that uh, correct, Anna? I listen. Said Anna? Anna? <laughs> Repeat, please. I didn't a blouse. Yes. A large blouse. Yes. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. Thank you. Okay, let's go with the second paragraph, please. Room number three. Wendy, can you... She bought a pair of shoes in the street, and then she had a problem because in that place, it's impossible to return. Where did you buy the shoes? Uh, number five. Okay, room number five. Jose Jonathan, Olga, or Tatiana. Where did the person buy the shoes? Where did you buy the shoes? Jose Jonathan, Olga, or Tatiana? One more time. Give me a minute, Wendy. Room number five, is someone going to answer? I, I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. <laughs> Okay, uh -huh. active listening team. Wendy, please repeat your paragraph. Okay, he bought a pair of shoes in the street and then she had a problem because in that place, it's impossible to return. Where did you buy the shoes? Where did he, Wendy? Where did he buy the shoes? Where did he the buy the shoes? Yes. Is that correct, Wendy? It's correct. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You see, sometimes the answers are right there, but we miss them for any reason, right? But we lost the track of the thought, right? So, active listening. Thank you, room number four. Uh, we were... No, room number three. Thank you, Anna and Wendy. Very good job. We're going with room number four. Diana, Mario, and Nelson, please. I'm going to read the, the paragraph and my classmates are going to make the questions. Okay. Okay. The last year, Mario bought pieces of a computer, but the order was incomplete. He tried to claim to the distributor and they asked him to, him to wait for two months, but the time passed and the piece never arrived. And at the end, the seller did not take responsibility, so Mario lost the product and his money. Uh, Nelson, can you do the question? Yeah, sorry. Uh, in, the, in the piece of the computer. Sorry. In, what is the, the question? question was, what was the product Mario buy? Okay. To which... Nelson, uh -huh. Thank you. Choose the... Choose the <laughs> to which room... <laughs> Okay, keep Room number one. Room number one. Room number uh, one. Okay. Pieces <laughs> the, he buy he bought pieces of computer, but it was incomplete. Yes. Very That's good. Right. Thank you. And the second question. How the many second... time I have to wait? How much time? How much time? Okay. How much time did Mario have to wait? To which room are you asking, Mario? Okay, keep I were I, I were in two months. No, Mario, pero porque dio la respuesta. Autogol, Mario. <laughs> Self sabotage. Thank you. <laughs> Another question. <laughs> okay, you can have one. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, what pero did the seller? Okay, to room number two. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
what the seller did. What did the, the seller? Uh -huh. What did the seller do with the problem? What did the seller do? Manuel, Maria, or Juan Carlos? Uh, the, the seller said, uh, uh, about the, the purchase, uh, it uh, was a, it had a, a change for the products. But no. I, no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I understood never arrived. Never arrived. Lost product and his money. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the sale, what said the, the, the vendor? I don't know, I, I, I didn't hear. Diana, is that yeah. correct? <laughs> no, the, no. Yes, the seller didn't do anything. Exactly. <laughs> so they just got anything. This is a trick. This is a trick. Tricky. <laughs> exactly. It's tricky. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank you. Room number four. Diana, Mario, and Nelson. Good job. All right. We're going moving forward to room number five. We have Jose Jonathan, Olga, and Tatiana. Jonathan. <laughs> He's the first, but. <laughs> Jose Jonathan, are you there? Eh, no. He's not here. Okay, I, I'm going to start. Uh -huh. eh, Olga bought, uh, bought a pair of shoes three weeks ago by marketplace. She told me it was a good, good experience. She told me what a good experience because it was the right size and the right color. And she's happy because she really fell in love about that pair of shoes when she saw them for the first time. And she said the shoes were comfortable. Okay. okay. Uh, Olga told me she paid by cash because it's safe uh, than paying with credit card, by credit card. She recommend, she recommend always use cash than credit card. Okay, what are the questions? Okay, the question number one is for group number three. Okay, uh, Anna and Wendy. Room number three. Uh -huh. Okay, when did Olga buy the pair of shoes? She bought the shoes in the marketplace. No, when? 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 Oh, when? I forgot when they have. Me. Can you help Anna, Wendy? When did Olga buy the shoes? No, Wendy. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. Ah, uh -huh, Wendy. Valiente en el active listening, ya la vi. No, okay. sorry. Veamos, ya intentó Anna. Ya intentó Anna. Okay. Um, room number five, le pueden hacer su pregunta a otro grupo. Veamos. Pueden seleccionar okay. otro grupo. Okay, group number one. ¿Y qué tienen con el número uno? El favorito, dice. <laughs> Wendy. Can you repeat the Olga question? By... Sorry. The repeat the question, Olga, please. Okay. When did Olga buy the pair of shoes? The last month. Mm, close, close, <laughs> but not enough. <laughs> Ah, repeat the, the paragraph teacher okay um tatiana please repeat the paragraph 
Okay, teacher. Uh, Olga bought a pair of shoes three weeks ago. Oh, my yeah. marketplace. She told me it was a good experience because it was the right size and the right color. And she's happy because she really fell in love about that pair of shoes when she saw them for the first time. And she said the shoes were comfortable. Olga told me she paid by cash because it's safe than paying by credit card. She recommend always use cash than credit card. History. <laughs> the, answer, the answer to the number one question is three weeks ago. Is that correct, Olga? Correct. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next question, please. Okay. Don't give me a room number, number six, please. And number six, nadie le ha preguntado. Okay. Hay un, hay un número seis, no sabía. <laughs> Por dos. <laughs> okay. The question number two is for group number six. The question is, what kind of product Olga bought online? A pair of shoes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> Nice. Difficult. All right. Yeah, this is difficult. difficult. <laughs> but at least right now, your classmates are being merciful. Al menos ahorita sus compañeras tienen misericordia y están repitiendo. <laughs> In the exams like TOEIC or TOEFL, they don't repeat. They play you the recording once and you have to answer after the recording. And if you don't remember or if you didn't pay attention, you lose the points for that exam. For that portion of the exam so active listening guys try practicing it right we don't have to be disconnected at any point we have 120 minutes of class we have two hours of class we have to be focused on the class the two hours all right let's well, continue what do you recommend for this exercise teacher it's better um, if you take a note or just put attention to on the big because we are beginning to practice taking notes is important taking notes, it's always useful. And eventually you will develop your hearing and you will not need to make notes. Mm -hmm. So start by taking notes. Mm -hmm. Even in, in Spanish, we need to take notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I imagine in a second language. <laughs> you guys are pretty much advanced already. So make sure to start trying this type of exercise. And I will try to include this type of exercise a little bit more so that you can practice, right? And we can go with room number six, Claudia Maria and Juan de Dios. Okay, teacher, we are we make a conversation. I, Perfect. We don't we don't do paragraph. More challenging. <laughs> okay. Hello, Juan de Dios. What happened to the bar was missing in your car? Did you find it? Hello, Claudia. Yes, I did. I have ordered. I have been ordering the part of my car, and it comes in two months. What happens if the product is damaged or doesn't fit with your car? The seller told me that I can return to change without without this extra cost. If it is broken or damaged, the policy says 50 days to return again the new product after receipt. Oh, that is, that is a very good return warranty policy. That's all. Mm -hmm. Questions? Uh, uh, after six, I... Uh, we have another groups. No, you can go from room <laughs> two, you can choose from two to five because number one has answered <laughs> all the questions. <laughs> okay. So you okay. can choose from number two. We're gonna spare them. Claudia. Number four. Number four. Diana and Nelson, please. Right. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Claudia. What happened if the product doesn't fit? The server have a policy. Refund in 15 days. That was Mario, guys. Is that correct? Yes. 
Repeat, okay. Mario. Ha, repeat, Mario. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you said I, it. I, I heard 15 days. 15 days. If we have a policy or refunds, 15 days. Is 50 days. 50. 50. <laughs> Two <Right>. months. <laughs> Important. That's a big difference. All right. And the second question, please. The second. How many... Uh, how... Sorry. Uh, what kind of product Juan has been ordered? Juan has ordered. Uh -huh. Has ordered. Yeah. The group number five, right? Uh -huh. Yes. You can answer. Room number uh, five. Uh, oh, Mario. Uh -huh. uh, uh, for a car. A pair of car. Very good. That's Close correct. enough. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you to everyone who participated. Again, active listening. One tip that I can give you whenever you are outside, doesn't matter where you are. If you are in a cafeteria, if you are in, a, in the mall, in a park, if you hear someone speaking in English, or if you're li someone listening to music in English or anything like that, pay attention. Whenever you hear English around you, pay attention and try to get a word, a verb, a sentence, one thing that you get, it's going to start activating your hearing, all right? So keep doing, keep practicing like that, okay? So now I'm gonna share with you guys another exercise in here. This one is for vocabulary practice, okay? So I'm gonna need a customer and I'm getting a customer care representative. Okay, this is a long conversation. So we're gonna be alternating, okay? So I'm gonna need, we can go one, two, three, four, five. How many paragraphs are there? One, okay. The first two people are going to read these two paragraphs, right? So Jorge and Diana, Jorge, you will be the customer. Diana, you will be the customer care representative. You will read these two paragraphs. Juan de Dios and Claudia, you will be, Juan de Dios, you will be customer. Claudia, you will be customer care representative. You will read these paragraphs, okay? From well jazz as the glitches, okay? And we need two more volunteers, please. Cristia, and we need one more volunteer. So Christian, Wendy, Christian, you will be the customer. Wendy, you will be the customer care. Se van a leer esto último, desde I bought hasta el final. Okay, so let's begin, please. We're gonna, the introduction. Mistakes happen when they do. Customer service representatives often need to handle customers' complaints. It's also important for customer service reps to gather information to help resolve the problem. The following short dialogue provides some helpful phrases to deal with complaints. Okay, let's begin, please. Sorry. Customers, good morning. I purchased a computer from your company last month. Unfortunately, I'm not... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I am not satisfied. I'm not satisfied with my new computer. I'm having a lot of problems. What seems to be the problem? Jorge? What seems to be the problem, Jorge? Uh, I'm having problems with my internet connection as well as repeated. Crashes, repeated crashes. Repeated crashes. I tried to run my word processing software. Did you read the instructions that came with the computer? 
Uh, well, yes, but the troubleshooting section was not helped. What happened exactly? Thank you. Continue. Juan de Dios and Claudia, I think. Well, the internet connection doesn't work. I think the modem is broken. I like a replacement. Replacement. How, how were you using the computer when you tried to connect to the internet? I was trying to connect to the internet. What kind of question is that? I understand you're upset, sir. I'm just trying to understand the problem. I'm, I am afraid it is not our policy to replace computing because of glitches. Let's continue, please. I bought this computer with the software preloaded. I haven't touched anything. Carol. Yeah. Uh, okay. We are sorry that you have you you have had a problem with this with his computer. Could you bring a bring in your computer? I promise you will check the settings and get back to you immediately. Thank you. Ahora uh, vamos con. Who are the last ones? Christian okay. and Wendy. Okay, that will work for me. Is there if anything else I need to know about this that I haven't thrown to ask? No, I just like to be able to use my computer to connect to the internet. Well, do our, our best to get your computer working as soon as possible. Thank you very much, ladies. All right, thank you to everyone who read. So this one, this one is a complaint call, right? And this, this kind of sounds real to the real life, right? So we're gonna check vocabulary first, all right? Um, gather, do you know what gather is? In this case, gather information. It's like put together information, right? When you have everything in all places, you gather, reunir, right? Gather, it's basically to reunite something, okay? Gather, all right? Then we go with complaints, quejas, complaints, quejas, right? And then complain without the T and the S, complain is the verb, quejarse complaint, all right? Let's see the next one. Is there any other word that you are, that you didn't recognize, guys? Troubleshooting is problem fixing, solución de problemas, troubleshooting. Okay. Troubleshooting, solución de problemas. Okay. And then... Uh, one question, teacher. Mm -hmm. When I, when the conversation say, I try to ruin my work. Mm -hmm. Try to ruin means to like sounds, como correr o iniciar o... Iniciar o correr, dejar que algo, que algo siga su curso. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. In which, which part of the paragraph is that? Oh, okay, when I try to run my word processing software, correr, cuando traté de correr el programa. Mm -hmm. okay. Run the program, correct. Okay. Glitch es una falla. Ahí se plural, glitches, fallas. A glitch in the system, una falla en el sistema. Okay. Mm, and then, yeah, we should be good with that one. Okay. These are the key phrases. Okay. This is this is the key vocabulary. We already got it. 
key phrases for when you're on a call or help, helping someone, right? What seems to be the problem? What happened exactly? I'm afraid it's not our policy. Generally speaking, you don't say to a person, no, we cannot do that. Mm -mm. <laughs> that sounds very harsh, right? That's very rude. We usually tell them in a polite way. For example, I'm afraid it's not our policy to return money in this country mm -hmm. when we buy something. <laughs> so you don't say, I cannot give you back. No, <laughs> we say it in a, it's in a polite way. It's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then like we have. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Spanish, right? I promise you, I'll, when you promise that you will do something, right? Did you read the instructions that came with the, if there is a manual of instructions, right? Um, if you want more information, how were you using the, whatever it was, right? And so on and so forth. So we have a comprehension quiz. Question number one, when did the customer buy the computer? When did the customer buy the computer? Last month. Mm -hmm. So that means it was bought a month ago, yesterday, or she hasn't purchased it yet. One month ago. One month ago. Exactly. One month ago. All right. Number two, how many problems is the customer having? Will you put the conversation, please? <laughs> All right. A lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> All the problems. Uh, oh, everything is happening uh, to you. None of them. You could. You don't Let's have. see. <laughs> One, two, or three problems. Three. <laughs> it's having two problems connecting to the internet and using word processing software mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. number three if you can answer a few questions i'm sure we will solution the problem resolve the problem or get rid of the problem resolve solve mm -hmm. resolve that is correct Number four, I'm afraid it's not the done thing to replace computer, not our policy to replace computers, not legit to replace computers. Not With our policy. Not, not our, our policy. Policy, correct. Number five, when did the customer first notice the problem? We're going to go back to the problem. When did the customer first notice the problem? when you try to connect to the internet all right let's see when trying to connect to the internet very good number six what suggestion does the customer service make to solve the problems bring it, bring it. it. Bring it in very first, correct. Number seven, could you please shoot trouble, troubleshoot, sing gently to my computer? I can't seem to get this software working. Troubleshoot, troubleshoot. Troubleshoot, that is correct. Number eight, once I make up the information, once I gather, or once I identify the information. Identify? Once I identify the information. Gather. 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 I don't know. Correct. Gather. She said, once I gather the information. Number nine. As a customer service representative, I need to get jiggy, dispense, or deal yeah. with complaints. Deal with complaints. Deal. Right. Deal. You, you deal, deal with things. Exactly. And last but not least, our administrative customer service or clever representatives customer service correct customer That's service good. representatives so we got 90 out of 10 correct 90 out of 100 that's good that's a good number guys <laughs> all right let me just um i'm just gonna 
show you the student's manual one more time. And I'm gonna show you a piece of vocabulary here. Okay. So here, I need six people, six volunteers. You, what you're going to do is that you're going to read what is in this box first, and you are going to look for the correct word that is applicable, okay? So you will read this sentence in the paragraph and you will look for what matches. We need six volunteers. Raise your hand, please. Raise your hand, we need six volunteers. Juan de Dios, number one, please. Wendy Maribel, number two. Tatiana, number three. Cristia, help me with number four, please. And then I need two more. Claudia, help me with number five, please. And we need one more person for number six. Diana Elizabeth, thank you. You can read number six. Let's start. Number one, Juan. Juan de Dios. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> to repeat me. Uh -huh. You're going to read this side and then you look for which one matches. Okay. It's a neutral layer of security requiring not only a password and username, but also a piece of information on the user source as a physical token. Mm -hmm. An extra layer of security requiring not just a password and user, but also a piece of information. Is that two-factor authentication, credit report, PIN? What do you think? Pin teacher. Pin. Okay. okay. Authentication. I think it's two factor yes, authentication. Two factor. Mm -hmm. Porque dice que it's an extra layer extra of security. Layer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All yes. right. Like in Zoom. Two factor authentication. <laughs> yes. Number three. Two factor Correct. authentication. All right. Thank you. Number two, please read. A report file by a financial institution to signal that someone may have stolen your identify. identity. No, identity, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. A report filed by financial institution to signal that may have stolen I don't Is a fraud alert. Fraud alert. alert. Number six. Yeah. Fraud alert. Because you're you're uh, filing alert. a report about some identity that has been stolen. Oh, so fraud nice. alert. Mm -hmm. Number three. Please read. Criminal deception intended to result in a financial financial or personal gain. Mm -hmm. uh, fraud. Correct. <laughs> Criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. That's a fraud, right? Number four, please read. An identifying number allocated to an individual, individual by a bank or other organization and used for validating Electronic transactions, PIN. Correct, an identifying number that says everything, a PIN. Number five, please. The fraudulent accusation and use of a person private identifying information from financial gain. Identify thief. Yes, identity theft. And number six, please. Yes. It is a statement that has information about credit activity and correct credit situation, credit report. Correct, that is the credit report, very good. Okay, that's gonna be it for tonight, guys. We're gonna go with the list one more time. So be ready, please. Ana Raquel Villalta. Present. Carlos Antonio. Present. Claudia Maria. Here, teacher. 
Diana Elizabeth. Here, teacher. Jorge Humberto. Thank you, teacher. Jose Jonathan. Present, Miss. Jose Rodrigo. Present, teacher. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present, teacher. Juan de Dios. Present, teacher. Linda Ibet Márquez. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. María Concepción. Present. María Elena Guadalupe. Present. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Present, teacher. Thank you. Nelson Gabarrete. Present, teacher. Thank you. Norma Carolina. Olga Marleni. Present. Olga, if you can stay for the 10 minutes after the class, please. And okay. then Silvia Suleima Rodriguez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Present. Tatiana Michel. Present, teacher. Thank you. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta. Present, teacher. Thank you. And Christian Natalie Erasmo. Present, teacher. Very good. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Go get some rest, and I will see you tomorrow. Recharge batteries. Everybody. <laughs> Have a good night. Night. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Have a good night. Okay, now we're we're here. <laughs> Finally. Hi, Olga. How are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine. Perfect. Okay. Uh, en estos 10 minutos, Olga, usted me dice si necesita que repasemos algo, que revisemos algo. ¿Tiene dudas? Bueno, últimamente he tenido bastantes problemas con el Inter. Me he estado sacando. No me oh, cargo. Okay. Ajá. Okay. Y... No, pero sí siento que me cuesta bastante el manejar el pasado. Simple past. Mm -hmm. Ok, bye. Para simple past, le voy a dar un, le voy a, vamos a, le voy a compartir la pizarra. Vamos a repasar un poquito la estructura, algo. Mm -hmm. Pero como, como tip así, general, digamos, universal. Para simple past, la clave es que usted se busque las listas que están en internet de los verbos. Verbos en los tres tiempos. Y ¿Está lo... en dónde? En internet. Ajá. Ah, Usted ah. le pone como verbos irregulares, verbos regulares en los tres tiempos. Y, ah. por ejemplo, comer, ¿verdad? Eat. El pasado, ate, el participio, eaten. Eat, ate, eaten. Right? Go, went, gone. Sleep, sí. slept, slept. Um, Esa es como la base, eh, Olga. Porque si ya me los memorizo en presente y en pasado, ya puedo utilizarlos. ¿Por qué le digo esto? La estructura para las oraciones afirmativas. Vamos con esas primeras. Uh -huh. Affirmative sentences in past. Simple past, ¿verdad? La estructura es bien sencilla. Solo el sujeto más verb in past. Uh -huh. de, ahí, de ahí que le digo que hay que memorizarnos esos verbos. Porque si no me lo puedo, no hay forma de que yo lo diga. ¿Right? Por ejemplo, okay. I went to the park yesterday. Ok. Mm -hmm. El pasado de go, went. Entonces, como ya me lo puedo, lo ocupo, o sea, sigo la estructura sujeto, verbo en pasado. Ok. Mm -hmm. um, si fuera en tercera persona, digamos, Marta. En tercera persona, en presente, nosotros le agregamos una S cuando es tercera persona. En presente, ¿verdad? le agregamos una S al verbo. Por ejemplo, uh -huh. Marta Cooks, ¿ok? Pero en pasado, ¿no? Olga. En pasado, como solo dice la estructura, miren, sujeto, verbo en pasado. No le, agrego, no le agrego ni le quito nada, aunque está en tercera persona. Solo dejo el verbo en pasado. Entonces yo puedo decir, Marta visited her mother. Marta visitó a su mamá. Marta visited her mother. Estructura, sujeto, un verbo en pasado. Solo es para hablar en afirmativo. No le cambio, no le agrego, no le quito. 
¿ok? Entonces, okay. por ese lado, si lo vemos desde ahí, Olga, digamos que es un poco más sencillo, porque tiene menos cambios, tiene menos sorpresas el simple pas afirmativo. Uh -huh. Ahora hagan un par de oraciones, José. Ok. Eh, the flower. Uh -huh. Chain. Eh, the color. Change the color. Correct. Y ahí está que sigue la estructura. The flower es el sujeto. Change es su verbo en pasado. Ok. Mm -hmm. Algo bien importante es que suena la de change, right? Change the color. Change. You, uh -huh. Si yo no hago este sonido de ch, al final, solo como, sonaría como que yo estoy hablando en presente. Ok. I changed. Uh -huh. Changed the color. Right. Ok. Uh -huh. Eso es para las afirmativas, Olga. Hasta ahorita, estamos, ¿cómo estamos con estas? Estamos bien. All right. Then we're going to check negative sentences in past. Olga. Ok. Uh -huh. Para esta un poquito más larga la estructura. Aquí yo voy a utilizar siempre one subject, obviamente, mi sujeto. Y luego voy a utilizar did not. O en su defecto, didn't. Abreviado, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y luego el verbo en su forma base. Un verbo en su forma base. ¿Por qué no va en pasado el verbo? Porque ya tenemos el auxiliar did, not. Él está haciendo el cambio a negativo pasado. Entonces el verbo que sigue se queda igual, en forma base. Por ejemplo, uh -huh. mire, my mother didn't come to the party. Mi mamá no vino a la fiesta. My mother didn't come to the party. Lo que le decía, didn't, did not, va a ser el cambio. El verbo que le sigue se queda en presente, se queda en forma base, digamos. ¿Por mm -hmm. qué? Porque aquí ya están haciendo el cambio por él. Entonces él ya no necesita cambiar. Acá en afirmativo, como no ocupo ningún auxiliar, no ocupo did, ningún auxiliar, sujeto, Verbo en pasado. Ahí sí cambia el verbo en afirmativo. Uh -huh. En negativo no cambia porque tengo auxiliar y él está haciendo el cambio. ¿Ok? De acuerdo. Algo importante de notar es que, por ejemplo, en presente tengo do para todos los sujetos menos tercera. Tercera persona das en presente. Pero en pasado no va a cambiar. Es el auxiliar did para todos los sujetos. Olga. ¿Ok? Did okay. es el auxiliar en pasado. Pasado simple para todos los sujetos. Sea primera persona, segunda persona, tercera persona, dides el auxiliar. ¿Okay? ¿Haga una oración usted en negativo? Vaya, sería. My cat didn't eat. Uh -huh. His food. My cat didn't eat his food. ¿Y ahí usted? Ya habló en negativo, pasado. ¿Ok? Y si yo ajusto ah. la regla, ¿qué vale? ¿Ven? El auxiliar es el que cambia, didn't. Y uh -huh. por ser el que sigue, se queda en su forma base. De acuerdo. Uh -huh. Algo que suele pasarnos, eh, Olga, con frecuencia cuando estamos aprendiendo, es que decimos, por ejemplo, I didn't thought. Yo no pensé. Decimos los dos en pasado, el didn't y el siguiente verbo. Entonces, siempre hay que asegurarnos. ¿verdad? Si está el didn't, el verbo se queda en presente. I didn't think. All right? Mm -hmm. Solo yes. como eso. Uh -huh. Siempre que hay auxiliar do, did, cualquiera de esos, el verbo que sigue en su forma base. ¿Ok? Mm -hmm. Ok. And then we go with yes or no questions. Yes or no questions in past. Es la estructura similar por ahí, solo le vamos a cambiar el orden. ¿Ok? Va a ser did plus the subject plus the verb. ¿Ok? Por ejemplo, did you watch the movie? ¿Ok? Yes or no questions. 
Did you watch the movie? Did siempre. Sujeto va a variar y el verbo. Ok. El verbo okay. vuelvo y repito. Se queda en presente. Se queda en su forma base. Porque aquí al principio. Estamos usando el did. Uh -huh. Para contestar esas. Usted tiene dos formas. Usted puede decir yes. Sujeto did. Por ejemplo. Did you watch the movie? Yes. I did. Ok, yes, sujeto de yes, I did. O la negativa que sería no, subject, uh -huh. y entonces ahí sería didn't, right? O did not. Y el ejemplo que podemos poner sería, el ejemplo que podemos poner ahí sería no, I didn't. Ok. okay. Respuestas okay. cortas. Las de sí o no pueden llevar respuestas así cortas. Did you brush your teeth? Yes, I did. Did you eat pupusas? No, I didn't. Right? Se puede yes. valer. Y entonces las otras serían las WH questions. Que puede ser who, what, when, why, or what. Más okay. el auxiliar va a ser sujeto. Es bien parecida a esa estructura, solo que le agrego la palabra de WH al principio, dependiendo de que yo quiera saber. Ok. Mm -hmm. For example, when did you come? Ok. Oh, perdón. Subject plus verb. Ok. Y aquí tengo los requisitos. WH, when. Did, acá. Subject acá, verbo acá. When did you come? Ok. O, oh, why did you go there? Porque fuiste ahí. Why did you go there? Ok. Y ahí yes. sí ya puedo contestarla. Para contestar las preguntas de información, yo puedo usar una oración afirmativa o puedo usar una negativa. Ok. Yes. Todo se eh, vuelve. Es como un círculo. Para contestar estas, puedo usar estas. Ok. Y así se van estas. Questions. Okay. ¿Hasta ahorita, Olga? No, teacher, está bien. La okay. sugerencia de buscar la lista. Uh -huh. Los verbos. Trate de irse aprendiendo. Si, hay, si no tiene mucho tiempo o es muy estresante, comience con tres. Tres al día, Olga. Y apréndeselos en los tres tiempos. Así como le decía, por ejemplo, go, went, gone. Sleep, slept, slept. Eat, ate, eaten. ¿Ya se aprendió tres? Partículos todo el día, trate de hacer oraciones. Si tiene oportunidad en la clase de participar y usarlos, úselos. Y así va a ir. ¿Ok? De acuerdo, teacher. Thank okay. you. That's going to be it for tonight, Olga. Have a good night. Rest, and I will see you Have tomorrow. Bye-bye.